Welcome to St Peter's Church in Ipsley. If you are joining us for the very first time or you're a regular listener, you are very welcome. If you'd like to leave a comment in the chat box, please do. Our email address and contact details will follow the service. My name is Jacqueline Street and I will be joined this morning by Pam Butler, bringing God's word to us, and Jeff Thomas, leading us in prayer. Alex Street will bring our Bible verses. Let us open with a beautiful song. Beautiful Saviour, for in my helplessness you heard my cry, and waves of mercy were down over my life. I will sing this song of gladness Give my praise to the fountain of delights For in my helplessness you heard my Yeah. 
our time of confession as we take this time to say sorry to God for all our transgressions and we say together God our gracious father we confess that we have sinned against you and done many things to grieve you we have often been selfish and we have sometimes forgotten to pray we have not loved you as we should for these and other sins forgive us we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who died for us and rose again to new life. Amen. And we know if we come to our Lord with a good heart, he will forgive us our sins and our forgiveness. The Lord enrich us with his grace and nourish us with his blessing. The Lord defend us in trouble and keep us from all evil. The Lord accept our prayers and absolve us from our offences, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together and say what we believe. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. And we believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And Alex will now bring us our Bible reading. Psalm 75, God the Judge. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your name is near. Men tell of your wonderful deeds. You say, I choose the appointed time. It is I who judge uprightly. When the earth and all its people quake, it is I who hold its pillars firm. To the arrogant I say, boast no more, and to the wicked do not lift up your horns. 
Do not lift your horns against heaven. Do not speak with outstretched neck. No one from the east or the west or from the desert can exalt a man. But it is God who judges. He brings one down. He exalts another. In the hand of the Lord is a cup full of foaming wine mixed with spices. He pours it out and all the wicked of the earth drink it down to its very dregs. As for me, I will declare this forever. I will sing praise to the God of Jacob. I will cut off the horns of all the wicked, but the horns of the righteous shall be lifted up. Thank you, Alex. Our next song now is Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God. After this song, Alex will bring our New Testament Bible reading. Peter 4, 7 to 14. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be clear minded and self controlled so that you can pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power for ever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, 
for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Alex. Pam will now bring us the words our Lord has put on her heart for us this morning. Our sermon, Pam Butler. Peter is writing to the Christians who suffer for Jesus' sake, to those who have taken on Christ's attitudes, that hardship for God's cause are part of our purpose as his people. He now offers a perspective which is both encouraging and a warning. It's almost over. Peter anticipates a time of suffering and persecution for his readers. When it comes they must be ready, level-headed, alert, prayerful and unfailingly loving towards each other. 1 Peter chapter 4 4 verses 1 to 11 urges Christians to have the same attitude as Jesus towards suffering. We should see it as an expected part of fulfilling God's purpose for us on earth. Those who willingly endure suffering for Christ set their course of their lives away from mind-numbing sins. This is true even when those who still commit sins belittle and abuse us. We must stay alert so we can pray in these end times. We must keep loving each other, using God's gift to serve each other with God's power in and through us so that all the glory goes to him. How necessary is prayer for Christians? It's crucial. How concerned are we about keeping our minds nimble and focused for the purpose of praying? That's a harder question. What, if anything, keeps us from thinking clearly and praying faithfully? Verse 7 says, the end of all things is near. We should live expectantly that Christ is coming soon. Getting ready to meet Christ involves continually growing in love for God and for others. Peter writes that we must be self-controlled or alert or exercising sound judgment about all our choices. And we should be sober-minded in this context, sober means serious. In other words, we should be careful about how we live our lives. Our choices impact our ability to think clearly. It is better to be self-controlled so that we can pray. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 22, that if we truly love God and our neighbour, we will keep the commandments. Rather than worrying about all we should not do, we should concentrate on all we can do to show our love for God and for others. Verse 9 says, Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Christians today tend to think of hospitality as having people over for dinner, or hosting a, vis a visiting missionary. In Peter's day, Christian hospitality was a much greater need and had the p potential to be a great burden. For one thing, many Christians were forced to flee persecution, something we see even today. Often this meant travelling with limited means. These refugees relied on brothers and sisters in Christ to share their homes and food as they passed through from one town or region to another. With regard to hospitality, our primary focus of concern should be on the guests, their needs whether it's a place to stay, nourishing food, a listening ear. It doesn't matter if your home is messy. 
hospitality can happen around a dinner table, perhaps even over a shared tin of soup. It can happen if you're doing some work around the house or in the garden with someone. Don't hesitate to offer hospitality because you are too tired, too busy or don't feel you are wealthy enough to entertain. Each of us should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. What is a steward? A steward is one who is entrusted to manage the property of another. Every good thing we have is ours only by God's grace and intended to be used for his purpose. To fail to use God's gifts to us to serve each other is to fail to be a good steward. Wisely using everything we have to serve each other is part of fulfilling our purpose as God's set apart people. We must see whatever we have as a gift from God. After all, we have nothing which God has not given to us, as we read in James chapter 1 verse 17. We should see whatever we have been given as an opportunity to serve other Christians. In other words, we should not view anything which is ours as off limits for use in serving other believers. We not, must not be like people who believe they have the right to use their abilities as they please. We must all use our abilities faithfully and not just for ourselves. In verse 11, Peter widens the idea of those gifts beyond merely material things like food, homes and money to gifts of words and service. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that, all things, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power for ever and ever. Amen. Like our material possessions, these abilities to speak and serve are gifts of God's grace and are to be used in serving each other. Peter tells us to use them on God's behalf, with God's strength and for God's glory. In other words, as people set apart for God's purposes, we are fulfilling his will by serving each other. So when we speak to each other words of encouragement, we are delivering God's words. And I must say for myself that when I receive words of encouragement from any member of our church family here, I feel that I have done my part in helping to bring glory to God through his word. When we sacrifice time and energy to meet each other's needs, we are drawing from God's own strength. And whatever glory may come our way for these things, then goes then for these things then goes right back to God. Our lives, our talents, money, homes and helping should be spent for his purpose and to bring him glory. In the first part of the next section, Peter again urges the Jewish Christians and us to expect fierce trials instead of being surprised by them. We should not see persecution as strange and unusual for God's people. John chapter 16 verses 1 to 4. Hardships of all kinds will come. For these first century Christians, and even today, 
that would include intense political and social persecution for their faith in Christ. Peter says, do not judge God's character or trustworthiness by the quality of our circumstances. God wants you to know that you are not alone. You have the Holy Spirit to comfort you, teach you and help you. Rest assured, Christ will send his Spirit to strengthen those who are persecuted for their faith. Peter continues to describe how Christians should respond when faced with persecution. It should come as no surprise to Christians to suffer for Christ's sake. It is a cause for joy, not discouragement. Christ's suffering was a prelude to glory. So it is for the Christian. Take on Christ's attitude and expect God's purpose for your life to include suffering. Set the course of your life away from mind-numbing, pleasure-seeking. Be alert so that you can pray effectively at these end times. In fact, rejoice if you share in Christ's sufferings. God uses suffering to refine the faith of his people and our present suffering contributes to future glory. If you suffer, keep doing good while trusting your soul to your Creator. Remember this, God always keeps his promises. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Everyone wants to have a nice, easy, trouble-free existence. And yet we know that this life is a training ground to draw us closer to you and so conform us day by day into the likeness of Christ. May we not be surprised at the fiery ordeals that we are called upon to endure, but embrace them as your gracious training program to make us more like Christ. Christ. May we be used to comfort other, others in our sin-filled world with the same comfort we have received from you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pam. Stirring words indeed. I have time to sing again now. Even though I walk through the valley, my God is with me and I will have no fear. Following this song, Jeff will lead us in our prayers. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting and even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back, I know you are near, and I will get in the way.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with thanksgiving for all your mercy and your grace as we bring to you our love, devotion, thanks and praise. We thank you that the way to your presence is always open through Jesus Christ and that you invite us to draw near in full assurance of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we lift to you our world. It's really your world, Lord, for you have created it, but we are the ones making a mess of everything. Through cruelty and lack of consideration for our fellow men, through family breakdown, child abuse, crime, drugs, pollution, and now the effects of global warming, remembering especially the recent floods in Western Europe and China, and the wildfires in North America, and now last week's heat wave here in the UK. So many of us are confused and, yes Lord, often frightened by what is happening in the world and the feeling of being so helpless to do anything about it. So in our helplessness, we turn to you. We cry to you for help, to give all people, especially our leaders in government, the knowledge an understanding of how to put right the dreadful things which are happening around our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A prayer for the church. Father, we ask for your blessing to rest upon this place today as we pray for all leaders of your church and for all who teach and bring God love to others. We pray for our ministers, especially Garth, Ian and Paul, and for the spiritual growth of all Christians. Help us to see the kind of church needed in the world today and hold before us the vision of your kingdom, a kingdom of justice and mercy, truth and compassion. Help us to grasp the meaning of your gospel, which you have entrusted to us, and give us the grace to live by it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the numbers of people suffering from COVID-19 continue to grow, we pray that as the focus moves from containment to responsible lifting of restrictions, that decision makers will offer good leadership and that society will follow necessary ongoing measures with patience and perseverance. We think about the effects that the pandemic is having on the health of so many people. So we pray for children and young people struggling with the effect on their young lives of social isolation, interrupted education and concerns about their futures. For teachers, counsellors and those working in children's health services. For adults of all ages coping with loss of employment bereavement, loneliness, ill health, lack of confidence and anxiety. For families struggling with conflict, worry, financial insecurity and demands of daily life. For health and community workers providing support, advice and treatment whilst faced with increasing demand for their services and for ourselves, that we may be watchful for those in distress and be prepared to help whenever we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of sport that so many of us enjoy. Thank you that the Olympics have just started in Tokyo. Thank you for the wonderful celebration of sport that they will be and for the enjoyment that so many of us will get from watching them. We pray for the athletes, help them run with perseverance the race marked out for them, and to fix their eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. 
We pray for your presence and comfort for those who do not perform as well as they'd hoped. Please enable them to have their security and identity in you and not in their performance. And we pray for the organisers of the Games that you would give them wisdom as they set protocols to keep everyone safe during the pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A prayer for the school holidays. Loving Father, now that the school holidays are starting, we thank you for this time when families and friends can be together, whether it be at home or travelling away. With the fulfilment of their summer hopes and dreams, watch over the children each day. Keep them safe in the weeks ahead and guide them each day so that they can return to school next term with a new spirit and a new energy. Let's also remember their teachers as they enjoy some relaxation and refreshment away from the stresses of school life. We pray especially for those pupils and teachers who are leaving their schools, praying that as they journey into the future, they will be safely held in your loving care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are finding life hard at this time, for those with difficult decisions to make, problems to solve or difficult tasks to face. Lord, you know the fears and anxieties that fill our hearts and anchor our thoughts and minds in your great power and love that we may face the days ahead with peace in our hearts and with confidence in your fatherly care. Father, whose compassion does not fail, we bring to you the sufferings of all humankind, the despair of the homeless, the pains of the sick and the injured, the helplessness of the aged and the frail. In your mercy, comfort and relieve them according to their various needs, and may they all draw strength that you are with them in all of their troubles. We thank you, Lord, for the many miracles of healing, and we pray for all who administer to the sick and infirm. We remember especially Garth as he continues to recover from his operation, and for those, all those, mentioned in the weekly catch. And we bring you now others we know and love who are ill or in need at this time, and we name them now in the quietness of our hearts. We pray your blessing be upon them and those who love and care for them. And we pray that they may find encouragement and peace, that their sorrows and concerns be transformed into comfort and their loneliness into fellowship with you. We give thanks for the promise of eternal life and the hope of glory. And we commend to your everlasting love and care those who have died. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, a prayer for ourselves. Lord, be with us in the week ahead as we go out into the world. We pray that in all that we do and all that we say, we may walk more closely with you, aware that you are always at our side and that your fatherly care knows no bounds. And so, merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Remaining in an attitude of prayer, we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen.
Thank you, Jeff, for those lovely prayers. And our collect for today. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the way of your laws and the works of your commandments, that through your most mighty protection, both here and forever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And Linda Nicholas will now bring us our notices. Well, good morning, everyone. We have quite a few celebrations this week. And we have birthday greetings for Mark Lamb, Chris McLaren and Sharon Sweeney. And we wish them all a very happy birthday this week. And indeed, anyone else who has a birthday. Also, we have Ken and Maureen Hussey and Sonny and Margaret Samuel. They're celebrating 59 years of marriage. And many congratulations to them. And we hope that you have a really lovely day. We have some news of Betty Wood. She's doing very well and she's able to go out and visit her daughter and her very good friend has been able to come and visit her as well. She sends love to all in the church and misses her house group folk. And next Sunday, the services will be 10.30 pre-recorded service and 10.30 in-person live in church service. Please try and book if you can. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. I thank you for being with me this morning and I will pray you will join us again. And our closing prayer. Our Father who is in heaven, we thank you for the wonderful love that you have given us. We thank you, God, for the provision that you have given us. We are grateful from our hearts for you being with us. We praise you and glorify you. We thank you for the word we have heard through your servant. And now, as we end the service of today, we thank you, Lord, for you have promised never to leave nor forsake us. Thank you that you are guiding us. And we thank you for hearing and receiving and answering our prayers. Amen. And our going out song, give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever.